because God is faithful. God is faithful. Though he might delay, but he's still faithful. No matter what you are going through, no matter how far you are, whether you are in the den of the lions or in the fiery furnace or in the belly of a fish or in the belly of a disease, God is still faithful. Hallelujah! That's why we worship him. Always remember that he is faithful. Every time, everywhere, and in every situation, he is faithful. And he wants you to be faithful. He says unto you, be faithful. Even unto death. Be faithful. Because even in those moments, he remains faithful. When it seems like the whole world has crumbled. No more and a hope. He is still faithful. Hallelujah. The bigger the problem, the bigger the testimony. The bigger the problem, the bigger the testimony. But he remains faithful. And he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And he is faithful. Today we want to promise God that we are going to be faithful to him. No matter what he lets us pass through. Hallelujah! God shall lead his people some through the water some through the fire some through deep trials but in all that he remains faithful be faithful to him hallelujah be faithful Oh, hallelujah. Can we say praise the Lord? Praise the Lord. We want to sit down. We're going to have a testimony that will show you just what we are singing. That he is faithful. Whenever everyone else will forget you, he says, Though a mother can forget her child, but I will never forsake you. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Nor leave you. He is faithful. Amen. Amen. We're going to hear the we want you to pay real good attention because so we, we don't want you to miss some of the things. So because because God, God never does anything for just doing it. He does it for a purpose. And for an example. We so that somebody somewhere hearing that story he will be able to see the footprints on the sands of time what God has done for somebody he will do for you as well we have uh, Mr. and Mrs. Mzorewa that are with us here Mr. and Mrs. Mzorewa are with us here the wife has a testimony. The husband is part of the testimony. 
Murume wavo chikamu che chapupu chacho. So I'm going to ask both of them to come up here. Saka ndi chava kumbira vari vairi vauye kuno. The husband will be supporting his wife. As he was supporting her through this testimony. Uh, you all remember. Every, every one of you remember Bishop Ebom Zorewa. That is his son. And that is his daughter in law. God even remembers. There are things that God did for, for many generations, saying for the sake of my servant David. So, some of you, when God makes you, He calls you to the ministry, and you have to go through many things and suffer many things and forfeit many things. Because you are a believer, God does not throw it away. Long after you are gone, you may find one of your children or grandchildren, God remembering. <laughs> And, and I like to say when a black man comes to be prayed for coming to Jesus for any need Jesus remembers when he was carrying the cross that a man from Africa a man from Cyrene was made to carry the cross God never forgets Simon. Hallelujah. Amen. So there's lots already on your side. So you must come with confidence. Amen. May God bless you. I want you to listen. And be blessed. Amen. How are you, people of God? I am so happy as I am standing representing the Mzorewa family. I was born at Chikan Wamtasa. And I was This is our 27th year of marriage. And I was married into the Mzorewa family. I'm a 27. Tirimu Muchato. I was born in 2006. In the year 2006. I went to work in Namibia. In November, in November 2007, I started to, I fell sick, I had uh, problems with my back. I was in the health sector in Namibia. My workmates at the hospital. They labored to try and get my back in, back into shape. I was in terrible pain. Until I was uh, taking painkillers, they would inject painkillers. The strongest painkillers that were in tablet form could not manage the pain. They showed such love and care for me. I was not admitted at the hospital. They were taking care of me while I was at home. The back ache or the pain in my back did not subside until the end of 
Saka wana chiremba wa indi batsira tika oranga na utisa. Ziri nane kutindi uye kunora pirwa kumno ku Zimbabwe. And the doctors that were attending to me, we agreed that it was better for me to be attended here in Zimbabwe. My specialist Makuru I Batsrana Nini Achimo Asata Abu Anga Asata Abu Dam Zimbabwe. The specialists that were attending to me, they were still here in Zimbabwe. Saka Wam Zorewa Wakawaya Usundi Tora Tika Rap Kwe Chungu Amono. My husband came to fetch me and I was at, I was attended to here for some time. Ashikasa Nyanya Kubatsira Nebonanga Dai Twama procedure Ekubatsira Kupoza Zekuwaza Kuya. It did not help anything. They had done some procedures, some operations to try and uh, reduce the pain. Shikatora Nguandi Chita back and forth. And it took some time. I was going back and forth to different places. Saka muna 2009, na May. Now in May 2009, I went back to Namibia. Because it had become clear that I would never be well again to go back to work. So I had gone there to just go and arrange my terminal benefits. The beginning of July. While I was there, a voice spoke to me and said, you must fast. For 10 days. So I took a 10 day fast. Uh, it was a real serious fast. Whenever I would break the fast or whatever food I was taking at that point was very, very little. 10 days, yeah, it's After the 10 days, the pain grew worse. And I was admitted into the hospital where I used to work. Just after two days, it continued to get worse until I was admitted to the intensive care. Whilst in the intensive care, Fifteen of the uh, top managers of the hospitals in that area or province, uh, they only work in the ICU of the hospital that I had been admitted to. When they came in the morning and they were checking up on me, they had been checking you know, the patients that were in the same ward as I was admitted, where what they checked for what they call vital signs, uh, like the blood pressure and uh, how other organs are functioning, they check on all those things on their machines. And the signs were not looking good at all. Then they asked, what is this woman suffering from? And they said, no, she was just admitted yesterday, but she's in such terrible pain. And they came to have a closer look at me and they recognized me uh, that I was once a, a, work, a worker there. Uh, whilst in that condition, I began to see the hand of God, though I was in terrible condition. Now, the specialist that was the one suitable to attend to my condition, a neurologist, 
Anga acha nguya asi asa tata anga bas. He had just arrived, but he hadn't started his duty. Asi awanu kutundo angoro akurue chipata rwai jizi yakutukune muna akadaro akutanga basa nisu. But this because they were the senior people at the hospital, they knew that there is this uh, patient in this condition. So that neurologist was called and he carried out his diagnosis and he said I would like this and this done. Uh, they were using very uh, big machines. government hospital at this hospital, because it was a government hospital, they didn't have these machines that were required for the procedures that were supposed to be done. But not far from that hospital, another hospital had been opened by a group of South Africans. I was taken there. And they did what they did. A lot of money was required. But all these things were now done for free because these people were saying, we know this woman and we worked very well with her. And the pain continued to increase. And until they put what they call an epidural uh, catheter, like what they do when uh, they're giving an intravenous uh, drip, but they would do it on the spine. Now, the medicine that uh, I was being uh, administered, many of you know steroids. Ten percent of that dose. Uh, the dosage that they were administering to me. Uh, many people, when they are administered on these steroids, it's just 10% of what was being administered to me. Ten times normal dose. I was being given 10 times the normal dose uh, that they give to people that are terribly sick. And I stayed in the ICU for a long time. That time it was so difficult for my husband. Because his mother, Buyam Zorewa, she was sick and she was at our home. And she was in a coma. So he came to Namibia after my condition continued to deteriorate. And while he was with me in Namibia, uh, our mother passed away. But all this, it was just so that he can come for a short time. Because as they continued to investigate what was really troubling me, they then found out that I, was, I had a very rare virus. The medicine to treat that condition or that, uh, to deal with that virus it's, ne it's not available all the time. They make it only on demand. If it's here in Zimbabwe, if you want to buy that medicine, my transactions are to know it was reserve bank to reserve bank. The transactions are handled by our reserve bank dealing with the reserve bank of the country where the medicine will be bought from. But the grace of God even unto this day, no one has any, any explanation as to why. At the local pharmacy, for some reason, there was just a dosage for five days of this very uh, rare medicine. So, my husband being there was very important because the medicine was very, very expensive. 
gadzirisa kuti utengwe nekuti kurongwe kuti umwe wacho nekuti dose yacho yaifanwa ita 20 ye 21 days saka kasiyo gadzirisa mari dzacho so he made the necessary arrangements for the dosage for five days that was there to be bought and also for the remainder of my treatment which required a dosage for 21 days for all the medicine to be bought as well Saka wanu wakanti tendere za wajinji ma Zimbabweans wangawari Namibia yese weweze utano waibatsra na utuwaronge kutumwe mshonga wa Sarato uona say. So all the Zimbabweans in the medical fraternity because they knew me they then came together and made the arrangements of how we could get the rest of the medicine. Sichi bazango ita wakutimukuru we Nam pharmacy, Mukuru pharmacy, you know, or Derama pharmacy, same Shonga, Ikoko, Muzimbabwe. And it so happened that the head of the uh, pharmaceutical government, pharmaceutical company that orders for the rest of the pharmacies, he, the head of that was a Zimbabwe. Saka Mashkanza, Zitu Tengere, Wanwaka Batsrana, Gangoti Mchidimbu. People work together. And I said, we are ordering the medicine, it will come. So five days, the Zapera, Saona Umwe the next drug, Kudura. So we only had four days to get the rest of the medicine for, for the uh, entire period of my prescription. Because if we had stopped the treatment after the four days had elapsed, it would mean that I would need another level of this medicine, which would become even more expensive. Saka Muswacho, day five. Wanuakutim Shongauripi. So on day five, as people were wondering, where is the medicine? Mukuru ya ku Zimbabwe akuti adiskuzi auti ziruk famba se yasi anti sata ne responds mshonga anti sata nda now. This Zimbabwe and the head of Nam Farm, he was saying, well, I don't know where the medicine is because we don't have it yet. Umwa kwa no akare gira wango akare gira mabasa o wachingo cha mafoni wachi you know they took it personally waku mpopotera. Others they stopped doing what they were supposed to have been doing and they started to phone around and they were even shouting at this man. Saka umachi but iongorumbo zironga se itaha kam shongocho itaka. Then someone said, how did you arrange your things? Look for the medicine. Neku pererwa anoti iye aga sumuga aga enda ku stores kwa if kuno fikira mishonga. Because he had become so desperate. He got up from his office and went to the stores where this medicine would arrive. Panga pane box re mshonga unokwana kupedza treatment wakanyorwa kunzi chikano wa msoreo. And there was a box there with sufficient uh, dosage or quantities for me to complete my treatment with my name there. To this day, at his youth wakashukase. Kushikira nasu no uyu, we don't even know how this medicine got there. Saka mushinde satana akaramba chishinga irira kwa wai wone kwa nikuwa nda andiri kuno kungono ngo shika ndege ndege kaita mastaira asi jikango itika mshonga waka shika nengua. Now the devil tried to interfere where the medicine was and where I was being treated. You needed an aeroplane to get there. So things delayed a bit but the... Eventually, the medicine arrived. Kushika ni mana mi bienz, aku volunteer kuita jinu, ne kungonzo, ambiri ya kuruwara kwe mkazoshu. Until Namibians ended up volunteering to assist and do things because they had had the fame of my disease or my sickness. Kutinda ito ono ono, anondi vaka chira wachi vanjimbo, kutituna kungo kuona iwo maimi, takanzo kwa kutimaka ruwara, Jakata imu ka mangamuri chitu na mu ICU Asimichiri mpenyu kungo unguya kungo dongo rera wakuti wango one wamu na akada People would just come from everywhere Coming to visit me because I would say We heard that you were almost dead Lying in the intensive care unit 
We just want to see this miracle of this while you are still alive. Ndabuda wapera mazuwa ndakabuya kumba. After some days I came home. Ndaingorwara zvakadaro. I was still sick. Saka we muri zvinji yacho iri yekwamzorewa. Ah so our relatives most of them from the Mzorewa family. Wakaronga kuti ndiende ku America kunorapa. They arranged for me to go to America to be treated. Sakapane organization. Sakapane organization yema inoitwa ma research ne hurumende ya America ne zveutano. There is an organization in America that is just there to research on diseases and things like that in America. In the National Institutes of Health. It's called the National Institute of Health. Saka wanuari koko waka fundi sisi sa jeutano. The people that you find working in that organization are very, very learned in the health area. And what they use is the top, top, top uh, resources in the whole world. So God made a way and I was able to go there. He did all that they could do. And they went beyond because of the grace of God. You're saying this woman that has come from Africa, let's help her. Also knowing that I am also in the medical fraternity. But they got to a point where after they had discussed and had meetings and everything else, considering the results of what they had uh, been able to find out, Say, woman, we see that you are terribly sick. But your disease is not yet available in, med in the medical books. We cannot help you in any way. Uh, the person that helped us to get into that. Chikamuche Harvard University. As friends that are a part of Harvard University. Whatever they examined, the result the findings were also sent there to Harvard University. And they failed to find out what it was. People, you know, said, well. Having come in this condition, can we allow a situation where she goes back the same? They came together and they took me to California. California, Eko Kondo Kune, Wanigati, Wanoita, Jema Prive, my doctor, Anoita, Je Private, Wepam Soro Soro. In California, that's where you find the top, top medical doctors that are in private practice there. Until the neurologist that I went to see, he is uh, said to be the best neurologist in America. But when it came to my condition, he failed to give me a solution. So I eventually came back home. And I had piles of top, top painkillers. Uh, Morphine-based painkillers. And I had piles of top, top painkillers. And I I had piles of top, top painkillers. And I had piles of top, top painkillers. And I had piles of top, top painkillers. And I because of the pain. Saka. Pana. Is that okay? Did I lift the major part? She went in bed over the Okay. Saka kush. Nguwe yesei. Nda inge ndiri munu. Akango rara. In all this time, I would just be sleeping. 
Eh, kana kutaura kwa hindi rwaza. Even speaking or talking was painful. Zekuti zimwengu anda ito taura ne masai na omzore wa kuchitaza kubuditha mazu ine kurwaze wa. Until sometimes I would use sign language in speaking to my husband because of the pain. Mwana wedu mduku uyo. Our child over there. Aka off kwa kuyenda ku one of my best university kwa America chungo beza form 4. Was offered to go and study at one of the best universities in America soon after form 4. Asine kuona kuruwara kwa mayo kwa karamu. But because she saw my condition she refused to go. Izo jia kwa beza form 6. Right now she has completed the A levels. She could have gone to study anywhere in the world. But she refused because she had seen my condition. Said I will go to South Africa. Because in her own words she said, it may happen that if I'm so far away, you may fail to uh, organize for me to fly home. But if it's South Africa, I can just get onto a bus and come. In short, God allowed that if it was possible to have been treated, you know, basing on human knowledge and endeavor, I would have been healed a long time ago. In all these places, right through to California where I went, I didn't fail to find money. Uh, we are fortunate in that from my own family and my husband's family. We have people that are very wealthy. Others would just phone and say, how much do you need? But they'll say, tell me quickly, because right here where I am, I can do the transfers. Because, and, and the money we are talking about is thousands of US dollars. And the money would come for me to be treated. So if it required money, if it was money that it would have taken, I would have been here. If all that was required was the love of a human being, my husband is very loving. Kushika peku regera his own career. Until he let go of his own career. Neje basa rema woko kuti muna haite mari. And his business and things that he was doing. Kuti wange wari pachiko neni. Just so that he could be close to me. Saka dai rudoru wa irapa. So if just human love could heal. Ndikada indaka pora. I could have been healed. Asi jaida mwari. But it required God. I think again. That it's not a coincidence that these things uh, happened to a person that was, that's got a, a, a name that is well uh, recognized and known. My, the way I was treated. Why? Okay. My healing. God knew that many people would get to hear about what has happened to me. Daisha. The way God does his things is amazing. He wanted to uplift the people of Zimbabwe. Because if it was only about faith healing, 
It wasn't a problem for me to go to Pastor Chris. It wasn't going to be a problem for me to travel to TB Joshua. Or even to get to Benny Hinn. That was not a problem for me to get there. But God ordained his servant, Brother Mdoti. Uh, my husband, his work, his job. There's a communication. He is in the uh, filmmaking industry. Until some of the famous people you know that produce films, they know my husband very well. So my desire. Just thinking about God's program. And in thinking that it was God's program. Ministry, yeah, ministry ino. This ministry, spoken with ministry. And the gift that God has invested in Brother Mdoti. It's going to it's going on to the world map. <laughs> How I got to come here? I watched your television broadcast. At the beginning of the year, God had revealed it to me that I am now going to be healed. And I said to my husband, I am no longer taking this medicine. So in the midst of the week, coming to the 8th of January, I said to my husband, we are going to this church that we are seeing here on this broadcast on Sunday. When I say that, my daughter said, oh. That's the same church that the Nirenda family go to because she's friends with Grace Nirenda. So they found one another, we got the directions, and we came. After we had failed to find our way clearly, uh, Brother Nirenda is the one that came to fetch us. In knowing the pain that I was going through, Grace said, Well, you know, uh, our church services are usually a bit long. So take your time in coming. Hallelujah. <laughs> Uh, 
Pataka zoshi kando vuka kwa wango sara ma bench matatu kuma shure tika gara. By the time we arrived, I think there were only three benches remaining at the back there, and we sat. Kugara kwa ito ndi neza, jekuti kana kujigacha iko ndai jikanda gara. Ah, sitting was so difficult for me. Even eating, I would have to lie down uh, to eat. After a little uh, while, I couldn't even sit. And I went to the old church at the back there. And that's where I lay down until the service ended. Then Brother Mdoti and his team came. But the good thing about God, for the four years that I was sick, I never looked at the scriptures that talk about healing. But because while I was in there, I couldn't hear clearly what was being preached in here. So I just said, well, let me go on the internet and read scriptures that do with healing. I knew many of the scriptures, but God used that time to just continue to increase my faith. Those, those that know me that saw me in the time when I was sick coming out of a family that is a Christian family people right would pray for me from everywhere it required a lot more faith to think that I can be healed and I would rise up instantly. So God arranged everything. So as I was in there, I was fortunate to be the first one to be prayed for. Brother Mdoti came, spoke a little bit, and he said, now we'll pray for the sick. So they prayed for me. Those that have, yet, uh, that have not yet been prayed for by Brother Mdoti, or that have not seen him as he will be praying for the sick, if you are just looking for this uh, uh, <laughs> fantastics and uh, things like that, you will have a problem with the way he does his things. He laid his hands on, on me. I think he just spoke three sentences. And here I am. Just allow me to speak in the Manika dialect. There is not much I can say. I think she has said it all. Perhaps the only thing she forgot is what, for me, makes it special. Is that before she became ill? She was in the service of the Lord. She preached. She even delivered. So she's special to me in two ways. Because she is also my spiritual role model. 
At the end of the day, no matter how many languages you speak, the only thing you can say about this is three words. It's praise the Lord. Amen. God is faithful. We'll ask their daughter, she has something to do with this. Just Amen. God bless you. Good morning. What uh, makes it so precious for me to stand here? It's to see my mother seated there and able to speak to others. I can just say the past four years was very difficult. I uh, just want to say... Uh, uh, thank you to the Lord. Um, I thank God that I have very supportive friends, Anna Grace, and my family. And I was able to go through high school, even through this very difficult time. I also want to thank God that I was able to go through my high school and pass my O levels with good grades. Uh, even though we're passing through such a hard time. And I also want to thank God for the miracle that he's done in our family. It's uplifted my faith immensely. Um, and I would sort of given up with this miracle God has just reminded me and he's increases my faith. <laughs> And I've also learned with this miracle kuti ngwaya mwari amunga izi munga ita zvese zvamunga ita munga tsvaka kwese kwa munga raka We and that the next question is that God's time that he has appointed for whatever he will do, you will never know it. Whatever we try to do could never help or do anything. It had to come at God's appointed time. So, though you may be having a problem, keep holding on to the Lord, you make a way. Bless you. Amen. Not only does God have an appointed time, but he's got an appointed place and an appointed person. God makes his ways perfect. Hallelujah. Can we say amen to that? Amen. God is up to something. Hallelujah. Amen. There is something that is in the making. Hallelujah. Amen. There is a visitation upon this nation. If only this nation could recognize that God is up to something. This is a visitation upon a nation. The Spirit of God is offering upon this nation to bring this nation to find its own destiny. Can we say amen to that? Amen. Other nations found their destiny through the military. Kenya through long distance running. Brazil through soccer. 
But this country, the destiny of this country, is in the word. This Bible, Bible is coming to be a life in this nation until our national leaders they will soon recognize that there is something that God has given us that other nations don't have the ability and the access to the supernatural God allowed all these institutions of medical science to fail it was God who confused them hallelujah he allowed everything else to fail so that at the appointed time in the appointed place with the, with the appointed hands he might accomplish his own will because there is a will of God to be done in these things hallelujah can we say amen to that amen in the month of June, in the month of June, 2011, a woman came here. Our sister Kwashirai. Sister Kwashirai. She spoke to me about her condition. She had been six months at Paranya. Three months at Karanda Hospital. Three months at Avenues Clinic. Plus 27,000 US, US because of cancer. When she spoke to me, I said, If it's cancer, just sit down here. I phoned Brother Mudoti. I said, Can you come quickly? It was on a Friday. I was the only witness he had. He prayed for the woman. And when she went home that night, she started feeling so hot. She sweated and sweated until the sheets were wet. She, the next day, the same thing. And the cancer left her. And I was seeing it with my own eyes. I'm a witness. Where is Sister Kwashire? Sister Kwashire Murugupi. Sister Kwashire. She's out there at the back. Come over here, sister. We are here, Sister Kwashire. Now, God is up to something. He allows, it's not that medical science cannot do anything. Many times they help. But when the boss himself, when he wants to handle a situation, he just, he just disables them. Can we say amen to that? Amen. amen. When, when the miracle is delayed, until all hope is lost, it's because the boss himself is coming down. Hallelujah! The angel of water, Wemhood, when he saw the furnaces of Babylon being heated seven times, the angel of water, his eyes got red with anger. He said, I'm going to flood Babylon and, and, and quench those fires. When he was about to go, Jehovah said, No. You have nothing to do with this. There are times when God says to the doctor, You have nothing to do with this. 
He says to the doctors, you have nothing to do with this. I am coming down myself. The doctors of California, God says, you have nothing to do with this. And then God came down himself. Sometimes God will deliver you but sometimes he goes with you into the fire. There is this woman. She stays in Epworth. We never knew her until that day. Then she came back. She said, it's amazing. God has healed me. She had found, she found Nigeria. Jews, they phone and phone T.B. Joshua. It couldn't happen. She phoned Pastor Chris. It couldn't happen. Because God has a will also in this thing. Brother, let me tell you. No matter how much faith there is, no matter how much prayer there is no matter how much holiness is there the underlying thing there is also a will of God to be carried out in this thing there is no way that Jesus could be born in Jerusalem or in Nazareth, just because the time had come, God had to start moving and started moving Caesar to make a senseless decree because there is a will of God to be carried out in these things. There is also a will of God to be carried out. And God's will is tied up to his program. Amen. Amen. Believest thou this? If you think it's a myth, here is the woman. You can talk to her outside. If you are a lady and you go to the ladies, she can show you what cancer can do. We have another woman out there in, in Chihota. Amen. A woman in Chihota, Mrs. Murisa. She can tell you also. Where medical science had come to an end. And God took over. God is now in the business. Because it's a season upon this nation. Where is Sister Tracy? Sister Tracy, where are you? Sister Tracy Manango, where are you? Well, there she is. Come over here. Don't worry about your time, brother. I'm in charge here. I work by inspiration. There she comes. This lady, also a cancer victim. My own daughter, my firstborn, she was doing, uh, I think people who, have edu who are educated in America, somehow they get to be told, somehow you have to put back something into the society. So my daughter 
After taking a degree in America, a master's in England, then when she was here, she started going to the children's home to spend time with the children, giving back something to the society. And this lady here, being an orphan herself, and her brother, was working at the orphanage when she fell sick because of cancer she stayed at Chinyaradzo and my daughter when she was doing social work she saw her in that condition this lady she was eating half a banana per day which she salted to be able to eat it, and that was all. And she was praying very hard, saying, Lord, let me die. She was saying, it's enough. And then my daughter, said you can be healed can you write a prayer request she did not want to write a prayer request but respecting this lady my, my daughter she wrote a prayer request and the request was brought to me I sent brother Mudoti and brother Makomva they went with two of my daughters and they they brought her they went to Chinyaradzu there they managed to bring her where they could pray for her and after prayer Brother Mdoti warned her by the Spirit of God and said, When you begin to feel a lot of pain, don't curse God. You must know that that is the healing in the And it happened exactly like that. Just two or three days after prayer, within those two days she had a lot of pain then the pain went away then the appetite returned she began to eat she recovered and here she is is that all we are seeing it every day we are not calling for those who were healed on Sunday, on Sunday. Because we'll be here until five. There are other testimonies. You will hear them. You would remember about the men that had kapusi sakoma. The men from Bulawa whose legs were swollen like the elephant's legs. Our God is still doing all that. Some of you that are here for the first time and you want to see a true testimony, you heard Mrs. Mzorewa there. She's a medical scientist. She works with the doctors in medical science. You can talk to her. Talk to this lady. Talk to this one. And above all, talk to me. Me, I'll tell you that scripture cannot be broken. When we begin to get into this kind of anointing, we get into a reckless faith when we begin to say things. We begin to speak like Joshua. We say, Sam, stand still. Hallelujah! Because if you can believe, all things are possible. All things are possible. God makes his ways perfect.
And today we have Brother Whisper Gwen, He went to Malawi. Malawi. Yes. He's supposed to be in England now. <laughs> but he's here. Yes. He made part. an arrangement that he will preach today. Yes. Oh, the devil is in serious problems. Ah! The devil is in very serious problems. Right, ladies, you can go and sit. God left them a reminder of the cruelty of sin. Amen. Amen. The hour is at hand. If we have to speak, if we have to speak all the things that God is doing, then we have to stop the time. We have to stop the time. So today, we're not going to use our reckless, our reckless faith to stop the time. Because there are other more serious things to do. Amen. When the word is going forth and the anointing comes, sometimes you step into that zone where you suddenly feel that all things are possible. That's the time when you speak. Yes. And things happen. Some of you that have come a little while with us. Let me say, any spiritual man yes. is one step from insanity. Yes. Hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. Here's the children of Israel. Before them is the Red Sea. With mighty waves. And behind them, they are angry Egyptians. With spears. And swords. And they were shouting blasphemies. And Moses said, These Egyptians that you see, you shall see them no more. Ooh. Brother, this HIV. This HIV that you see, you shall see it no more. Hallelujah! 